Okay, so let's add the next piece of code. So now that our cowboy is moving back and forth, right, we'll just take one last look at it. We can see here he's sliding to the right, slides to the left, he flips back and forth, right? There's one problem. If I keep pressing the right arrow key, he slides right off the movie, right? And if I keep pressing the left arrow key, he slides right off the screen as well. So we want to control that so that when he gets to the edge, he stops essentially at the edge. So let's see if we can do that. So we'll go into the code, we'll go down to the code that I have finished here that I've commented out, and we'll get the next piece. And here's the next piece. All right, I'll just copy it and paste it in here, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so the next piece is two more if statements, and I've shortened the if statements. In other words, this if statement right here normally is written like this. If, and then there's an open curly brace, and then you put basically this cut in the middle, right? And that's the if statement. If, and then here's the argument, right, the test. If Cowboy's X position is less than 30, meaning less than 30 pixels, right, his X property, then set his X property back to 30. So as soon as his X property gets to 29, put it back to 30. If it jumps to 28, put it back to 30. If it's at 25, put it back to 30, right? Now, if you have a simple if statement like this with only one statement in between the curly braces, what you can do is, is you can just shorten it. And that's what I did. So what I did is I just did it like this, right? And that basically shortens the statement. So now I can put the two if statements pretty close to each other and save a little room in my code. So this says, hey, if Cowboy's X property is less than 30, set it to 30. Or if the Cowboy's X property is greater than 520, set it to 520. Now, why did I do this? Well, the movie is size 550 wide. So on the x-axis, the width of the movie is 550 pixels across. So if he gets to 520, set him back to 520. I mean, if he gets past 520, set him back to 520. So if we do this now, control enter, we slide to the right, you can see that he stops at 520. And if we go to the left, as soon as he gets lower than 30, he stops and is put back at 30. So he's constantly being set back at 30. Right? It's constantly being moved back to pixel 30. It looks like he's just stopped, but actually what's happening in code is he's constantly being put back to or set. The movie clip is constantly being moved back to pixel 30. Okay, so that's the X property. Now, on all of these things, these movie clips, if you go into your, basically your library here and look at your ActionScript 2 classes and look, let's say, at your movie, right? And we go down to movie clip, right? So once again here, I'm in my, uh, let's see here, my library here. And I'm in ActionScript 2 classes, movie clip, methods, properties, drawing methods, event handlers. We open up properties, and you can see these are all the properties that you have. We've used a few already. So we've used X scale and Y scale, right? There's the X property, the Y property, right? Here is the width, the visible property, right? All of these properties are associated or uh, are worked with or inherited into the movie clip class. So if you're a movie clip object, which our cowboy is, a movie clipped, then he has an alpha property. And if uh, the movie clip also has a name property and a parent property, and we're going to be looking at another one of those properties right now. Let's go to the next piece. Now, the thing with our movie is he slides back and forth, but he's not running. We want to activate this running cycle. So if we double click on this movie clip, we want to have him run so that when he moves, right, he runs. Okay, so let's do that next. Now, to do that in the code, I got to go back to scene one and we'll see how it's done. Now, I will go down here and I'll grab the first if statement. We'll say copy and we'll paste it in here at the top. All right, right below our two if statements, paste that in there. And you can see now, I'll close this, that if, what we want to say is if 
dx is not zero. In other words, as long as it's 10 or negative 10, we want him to be running, right? So in this if statement, I've said if dx is not equal to zero. So that'll qualify both conditions of negative 10 or 10. Because essentially, he runs the same whether it's 10 or negative 10 because the running cycle is just flipped, right? We decided to flip the movie clip to make him run right or left. So all we want to know is as long as dx is not equal to zero and the cowboys notice this new property, current frame, right? Underscore current, capital F frame. Now it didn't highlight blue, but this property is a property in the movie clip. If we open this up, we can find it in here, right? Current frame. And you can see here that it has a lowercase f here, and mine has an uppercase f here, so I'm going to switch that to a lowercase f. Notice how it turns blue, right? So that's why it wasn't turning blue. So if dx does not equal zero, and cowboy's current frame equal equals, meaning is the current frame equals one. So if dx switches to 10 or negative 10, and the cowboy is still on the standing frame, then take the cowboy and go to and play the run cycle, right? Now, what I like about this is that this will only execute once, because as soon as the cowboy moves to the run cycle, his current frame will no longer be one, right? The cowboy's current frame will no longer be one, because as soon as he jumps to the running cycle, he's going to cycle from frames 2 to 10. And so this will only execute one, and we won't get stuck on the run frame. So if you can see here, control enter. Now if I move him to the right, he runs. If I move him to the left, he runs. But if I let go of the keys, he keeps running. So that's no good. Also, watch what happens if we don't put this current frame equal equals one. What if we just said, hey, if dx does not equal zero, make him run. Well, if we do that, notice how as long as I, pr I press the left and right arrow key, he goes and freezes basically on the run frame. That's because 24 frames, frames per second, we're telling him to go to the run frame label, and he basically gets stuck there as long as we're pressing. So we need to have, need to need to have the second condition, which says cowboy's current frame equal equals one. So there's two conditions here. One, dx does not equal zero. And two, his current frame equals one, which is the standing frame. Then he'll go to the run frame. This will only execute once. Now the last part is easy. The last part is an else if. We'll grab it right here. Else if. Else if dx equals zero, and we let go of the key, and dx, the variable dx, turns back to zero, and cowboy's current frame, notice I'll make, put the lowercase f here, does not equal one, right? So he's running. So one, dx turns back to zero. We don't want him to move, but he's not on frame one, so he's running. Then make him go to and play stand. And actually, we don't really want him to go to and play stand. We want him to go to and stop at stand. And so there you have it. I'm going to save this and hit control enter. And you can see now he runs, let go, he stops, he runs, he stops. And so now we have keyboard control, controlling the running cycle, controlling the looping running cycle, and then moving him from a standing position into a run. And it works perfectly. So there's the first part of our catching game. We've set up our catcher who r runs back and forth. And now we need to make objects fall from the sky for him to catch.